Amen. Amen. Thank you. God is good all the time. Good. Thank you. I like that. All right. Emily is teaching our, uh, our first through sixth grade. She's heading that way. It is delightfully decorated back there, set up, because she also is going to be talking about spiritual gifts today. And if I could get Mr. and Mrs. Perkins to come help me. Uh, See, he immediately knew who I was talking to. She's still getting used to the whole Mr. and Mrs. Perkins thing. Ah, well, if you're Mrs. Perkins. The other Mrs. Perkins. The other. Oh, well, the Robinsons. No, you're the Perkins. So you guys are going to hand these out, but you're going to have to shuffle them up. So don't give, like, like, don't give your mom and Julia the same color. Make sure everybody gets different color envelopes that are sitting close to each other. You'll have some left over. Oh, there you go. Perfect. So, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Perkins, everyone, glad to have them here today, yes? I have, I have extras if we run out of uh, things to do. So, one, that one line, I wish we'd have sung that, that line over again. I was probably supposed to tell you, Sarah, to sing the second verse again, but that one about Jesus, Jesus is not used to losing. As a matter of fact, he's never lost. You know Tom Brady, that guy? Jesus has never had that look on his face after a game, okay? Because Jesus never loses. He cannot lose. He will not lose. And he is our brother. He is our husband. He is our redeemer. He's our savior. He's our friend. Now, don't open your envelope, but we are beginning today a study of spiritual gifts. Now, many of you, most of you have taken uh, your, uh, your spiritual gifts test, and I really, really appreciate that. If, it, if you haven't, it's not too late. Please do. We'd love for you to do that. Um, it just helps us kind of know what we're dealing with. Oh, thank you very much. Kind of know what we're dealing with, who we have gifts, uh, gifts and talents and abilities. Now, you got, uh, you got an envelope given to you, and I've got some envelopes up here, which means that uh, especially you who have the pale yellow, uh, you're going to have an exciting time. Matter of fact, I might give you other uh, extras. But um, so, anyways, h- how many of y'all have ever been to a housewarming party? Okay, what is one thing you're supposed to take to a housewarming party? A plant, a, plant, a gift, can of, cream of can of cream of chicken soup, black eyed peas, and a dime. I don't know. Um, Sally and I, when we when we built our house that we're in now, uh, a lot of people helped us build it. We we. Uh, we prayed for that house for years. We, we got to build it from, from the ground up, and I, I literally got to be a, a part of a lot of it. And we had our, we had our kind of a grand opening housewarming party, and uh, the, some of the ladies from the church had come and help us. And, and we had taken the, the, table, the chairs away from the table and kind of stacked them over along the wall so that people, as they come through, they could, you know, they could eat food um, uh, from the buffet, which is scriptural, the buffet, your body, it's in the Bible. So, um, so anyways, we had this one guy, <laughs> I'm not going to tell you his name, but uh, he doesn't go to church here, but he came in, he grabbed a chair and he drags it over and he sits down and he just starts eating like, dude, no, 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 this is a, this is not a, gra- this is a graze, not a sit and eat all day. And uh, we still have a dent in our wall from where uh, that chair he was sitting in got leaned up or something. I don't know. But when you go to a housewarming, get, a housewarming party or a housewarming, you usually take a gift right? Can I tell you something? When the Holy Spirit came to indwell you, he brought some gifts. The Holy Spirit never comes empty-handed when he moves into somebody. He always brings a gift. Now, he may bring one gift, he may bring a dozen gifts, but he always brings a gift. There are none of us who have the Holy Spirit living inside of us who have not been given spiritual gifts. Why do you have the spiritual gift that you have? We'll, we'll kind of figure that out maybe as we go along, but it's because that's what the Holy Spirit wanted you to have. But why does the Holy Spirit give the members of the body of Christ gifts? So that the body of Christ can be built up. So that the body of Christ can be edified. And so that we can evangelize. Because many of the gifts also, not, not only do they build a church and do they, do they encourage and strengthen the church, the church but they, they lend themselves to evangelism. Uh, Steve had to take uh, Cody to the doctor this week, and many of y'all have been praying for Cody, and you know Cody, uh, Cody is uh, Steve's friend, and, and uh, the, there was a chance that, that Cody might have to be put down this week. 
And uh, so uh, he got in there and the, like Cody was like way better. And the doctor was like, I can't explain this. And Steve was like, I can, because I got a bunch of praying saints that have been praying for that. And, the, and see, that's evangelism. He didn't whip out the Roman road. He didn't say, well, you know, you must believe in the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. That's ev evangelism is when I say, let me tell you how good my God is. Let me tell you how awesome my God is. Because then people go, wow, I, I want some of that. Uh, your, your God helped you through a tough time. Your God blessed you in a certain way. Your God opened a door for you. That sounds like a pretty good God. And what does the world think right now of God? Well, he's mean, he's bad, he wants to keep me from doing all these, um, all these fun and awesome things. He wants to ruin my life. No, that's the other guy, okay? He just wants you to enjoy a ruined life. Unfortunately, it doesn't last for very long. Um, what was one of the, how many of y'all are uh, read through Genesis, through the Tower of Babel this week, was part of your Bible reading this week? Okay, I'm doing that one. What hit me as I'm preparing for this, and uh, the gifts of tongues is a, is a spiritual gift, okay? And it's actually, it's, there's two parts of it. There's the unknown tongues, and then there's the known tongues. Okay, so what did God say? God said, okay, all these people, they have one language, and if, if, we, if we let them have one language, they can accomplish anything. So we're going to confuse their language, which I would love to have a video of this. I know they didn't have video cameras back then, but God, God got it all recorded. But I want to see where they're all sitting there. Hey, would you pass me the... And I mean, just from there on, it's like they, they were like, hey, wait, five minutes ago I could understand this guy, and now I can't understand a single word he says. We, we have a friend who, uh, um, uh, Todd, he, he said, I, I'm bilingual, I speak Southern and I speak English, but I don't speak much English. So, so it, it was that kind of thing. So what's one of the first things that we see God do? He confuses the language. On the day of Pentecost, what's the first thing the Holy Spirit does with, the, with his powerful gifts is he restores the ability for us to communicate because he gave a supernatural ability to speak it in other people's tongues. And, and we know that's just part of it. But, but that hit me this week. It's like, man, God, you already, as soon as the Holy Spirit comes in, he begins to reverse the curse. He begins to change what was what was there was the garden and it was awesome and then it got corrupted and as soon as the holy spirit comes in doing the work of jesus christ he begins to uncorrupt the corrupted he begins to reverse the curse i just thought of that so somebody write that down that'll, that should make it to a uh, instagram or um, myspace or something like that i don't know i know i had one of those don't laugh so um it's customary for you to take a gift on such an occasion now Here's audience participation. You're going to have to get up for this. You need to find everybody else who has an envelope of the same color as you. There should be four, on, four colors of envelopes. There is a beautiful uh, whatever that is. There's this whatever that is. There's this. And then I think there's a blue. So quickly get to that. Get to that person, uh, those people, and open your envelope. And then uh, one of you be the designated put it together person. And, and there's, uh, there's something in there for you to put together. There should not be any money in there. You didn't get an envelope? I'm going to give you two because that will make you a hero to that team. Anybody not get an envelope? Okay, just hmm? both of them. Two of them will be good. It'll fit in the message. All right, so open that up. Pale yellow. It's not what I thought you said. Pale yellow. All right, so... Can you put it together? Somewhere, just put it on the floor, put it on your seat. Some people are not going to get down on the floor and get back up in the, in the time that we have allotted, so some of you will have to help. I should have said this is not a competition, but for those of you, everything is a competition. 
All right, so if, you, if you've got yours, then, then you can return to your seat and just leave it set up wherever it is. You can, you can leave it and put together wherever it is. Uh, well, um, there were some envelopes that did not get passed out, so probably the missing pieces are here. Okay, so there's the missing pieces. I can't. Come from here. All righty. <clears throat> so when you're done, you can return to your seats. Thank you very much. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm not asking you. Now. By the way, Ch uh, Chet Frazier, have you noticed anything about the front of the sanctuary, the stage? I took the angle off of the cross, so uh, so you and you and Zale would, uh, and obviously Keenan would be able to relax during the service a little bit. So cool puzzles. What happened when you were putting your puzzle together and there was a piece missing? Was it frustrating? What if it was like like? Now, for some of you, the piece that might have been missing may not have been the little scriptural or the little, the little quote, quote. But, but without those pieces, you, you had no idea. It was just a pretty picture, but you had no idea what it meant. But some of you, it's just a corner piece, so it's no big deal. The church is made up of pieces of the body. We are all part of the puzzle. Like I said, the Holy Spirit came and he gave you a gift. That gift fits in this body at this time. And if you decide not to participate, <laughs> you got some people over there going, we're missing a piece. What does it do? What do we do? Now, sometimes they'll just go, well, yeah, we're missing a piece, but we, we kind of know what it means. We'll muddle through. But God has designed it to where you are intricately important to the body of Christ. So I'm saying this to say, since you have a gift, you are supposed to be utilizing that gift in the local body of Christ and in the body of Christ universal because we're a part of the body of Christ. Now, here's the cool thing. You and I don't have to have the same gifts. Matter of fact, it's awesome when we don't have the same gifts because we don't all need to have the same gifts. If everybody in this room had the same three gifts, we would look really lopsided and there would be things we could never accomplish. So it's interesting, out of the 33 gifts, and I know some of them are like, I didn't know craftsmanship was a spiritual gift, but we'll get to that. But we have a lot of crafty people in here, um, uh, so there you go. So it, it matters. What your gift is matters, and how you use it matters. It's important. You are uniquely and intricately important to this body and to the body of Christ. So... Um, we're going to take the next few Sundays, and when I say few, you know what I mean. Uh, with, with, uh, with God, this is a short thing or a quick thing or whatever he said, and Jesus is like, Jesus said it was going to be quick, and it's been 2,000 years. So if Jesus can say quick and it not be 2,000 plus years, I can say a few Sundays, and it'll be okay. So uh, I don't know how long it'll take us, but today we're going to try to get two of the 33 or uh, uh, 30 so um, gifts taken care of. So, uh, exhortation and, um, exhortation, and I know it's here somewhere in my notes, and discernment. Okay, so let's pray. Holy Spirit, we know you're here. We know you're here because your word promises that you're going to be with us. Now, when Jesus left, he left so that the Holy Spirit would come. So we know, first of all, when Jesus says something, it is so. And then we know that you're here because we feel your presence and power in our life. And we know if you came, you brought a gift. And if you gave us a gift, you mean for us to use that gift. It was a gift uniquely and specially picked out for me, picked out for the people in this room. And we want to learn better how to use our gifts, what our gifts are, and how it can be used to build, to edify, and to evangelize the world, the church, your body of believers and those that you want to redeem. So we thank you for that, and we pray that you'd bless us with your teaching. In Jesus' name, amen. So the first one that we're going to talk about is the, the, the gift of exhortation. This is the one that the majority of you had. Um, out, of, out of the 20-something people that took it, uh, took the test, um, I think like 14, 18 of us 
uh, have this gift. Uh, I, it is one of my gifts. The gift of exhortation is the divine strength or ability to 